Hello everyone, in today's video uh, we're going to be taking a look at a little nav map and just kind of the absolute basics of uh, setting it up and kind of a little bit of the interface things and how to create a really, really basic flight plan. So first things first, uh, what little nav map is, is, is basically a freeware little activity, uh, application I should say, not an activity, it becomes an activity once you get too engaged with it, that basically gives you the ability to uh, plan out maps, it gives you different types of terrain maps, different types of waypoints and interfaces with the thing. It's an amazingly effective program for it being no cost. So first things first, uh, to get your hand on it if you go online or you can steal this little link up here you got the same as the releases and downloads you're just going to go ahead and grab it uh, folks on windows you're going to get this glorious little zip file you simply unzip this little file somewhere and you get all these files like this which means you do not need administrative access to even install this thing which i think is great firing up nav map is super duper simple you're just going to go ahead and find your little nav map executable give it a quick little double click it's going to give you this nice little piece i think i recognize this aircraft down here on the right it'll also tell you of course what version is and it's going to go ahead and now pop itself up like this uh, once you get over to this point, of course, uh, this is uh, the basic interface that you can see here. Obviously, I was doing some flight planning. It tries to open up the last flight plan that you were working on previously. Go ahead and reset everything real quick to make it a little bit nicer. Um, if you do any sort of uh, measurements or anything like that, those are all going to be persistent, which is pretty cool. But before we even get into any of this, you'll probably notice I have a tremendous amount of airports all over this place. As a matter of fact, you have multiple different things that you can bring into existence here. I've got airports. I've got uh, navigational aids. I've got jetways. I've got ILS feathers. I've got everything everything. You will have none of this when you first start your actual program. So if you want to actually go ahead and get all this data from the flight simulator of your choice, whether it's X-Plane or Flight Simulator, you have to click this little button up here. So what this is going to do is it's going to bring up this option called Load Scenery Library. And what this does is it allows you to pick the simulator you want and then pick the base simulator path. As soon as you do this, you can come down here and you can go ahead and press the load button. What this will do is it will go ahead and import all of the airport navigational data in the universe directly into the program. You have to do this first. Now, by the way, something you want to watch out for is if the navigation data in your favorite flight simulator is updated, you're going to have to actually come in here and tell this to get the data again. So I'm actually going to press the load button right here. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to zip through and count the files, and then it's going to mechanically go ahead and load everything in. Keep in mind, if you have an error change, A-I-R-A-C, you're going to have to be updating these. And again, the process doesn't take a terribly long period of time, but it will take a few moments. So uh, let's use some magic of editing here. I'd make the two minutes and 30 seconds later comment, but um, you can see that it did a pretty nice job. All right, I go ahead and press the OK button, and I can actually see, even from my example here, that it quickly went ahead and grabbed um, some new details that were ch changed over time. Now, like I said, you don't have to do that every single time, but it's important that every once in a while, when there's a major navigation update, that you do take the time to quickly do that. The second thing that I want to show off uh, before, again, we get too carried away with kind of the basics here, is the fact that you have the ability to actually connect to a flight simulator. If you click on this up, uh, button up here in the top, you have a different choice here. You can either select an FSX, prepared 3D, or prepared, or whatever you want to call that one, and MSFS. Now, the great thing with this is, is that because this stuff is kind of pre-built in and automatic, you can literally just load run up Flight Simulator, and it'll actually connect automatically and pop your plane down here on the map anywhere where you're actually currently located. Now, this is great, because you can also tell it not to grab the AI airplanes everywhere around with this little setting here. Again, this is pretty accurate. So the other thing, too, is uh, you got to watch out for X-Plane, though. X-Plane is not the same as uh, using um, MSFS or FSX. It actually requires a special plugin to be installed into the X-Plane data directory in order to work properly. Now, the good news is, is if you already have this here, you probably discovered that you have XP Connect, which is the actual tool used to go ahead and put this into your X-Plane uh, little drive here. So if you were to go up to this uh, little folder and just drag this into your plugins folder into X-Plane, you would also have X-Plane connectivity in addition to what you're going to have in the regular connectivity that you had already with MSFS. FS. So let's go ahead and pop this sucker open again. Cool. So now that you've got your data and you got your simulation connection, well, let's take a look at some of the absolute basics here. Now, the cool thing here is that with this program, a left click and drag is going to be uh, dragging your map perspective. Right click is basically going to bring up a context menu. Uh, this is the most amazing context menu I've ever seen because it is completely dependent on what you right click on. You know, if I right click on this VOR over here, Hartford VOR, it's going to give me new options here. If I right click, you know, right on this little ILS feather, for example, it'll give you specific information for that as well. I'm actually going to go ahead and click 
clean up. I got myself a user point. I can actually just delete that user point that quickly and that easily. You know, if I want to quickly work around different pieces here. There's a couple built-in tools which um, I use all the time. Uh, one of those is going to be drawing a range ring. The other one's going to be drawing a distance ring. To draw a distance, uh, you can just hold down the control key, left click once, and then you can go ahead and get this beautiful little line to go ahead and calculate things. Other thing you can do, of course, is if you right click, you can also add range rings. So if I shift click, I get a range ring. Shift click again to delete. Control click gets me this great bearing tool. And again, control click again on the X here. We'll go ahead and delete that. It's just a really, really good tool when you're planning out flights and trying to work out how far things are going. Speaking of planning out flights, uh, if you look at the top here, uh, we've got a wide variety of different options. These are basically going to be controlling what's visible on the map at any given time. So for example, if I want to just soft runways, I could shut off my runway button and leave this one on. If I wanted to take a look at empty airports, I could push this button and see just the empty airports. Keep in mind, the empty airports here, uh, if I turn them on or off, are basically these old school, yeah, like Heckler Field, of course, and Coventry, stuff like that. We also have the option to turn VORs on and off, NDBs on and off. You can turn waypoints on. Bad news, all waypoints are visible. You can't select between high altitude and low altitude. The moment you mash that button, I bad news, you're gonna get them all. Other, of course, things you can do is you can get ILS feathers. Uh, these are really cool because they let you find out where ILSs actually exist, even though you can't actually find them. So now this is cool because you'll see this one down here, I believe uh, that's going to be HPN. No, it's Danbury. It's got this massive feather. This is probably an LDA. Hartford also, if you look at it real quickly, you can tell you're working with an LDA because they're not coinciding with the, uh, or I should say parallel with the runway heading there. So it's actually very neat little way to look around. The V, J, and T are basically going to give you your Victor Airways, which are low altitude, and you have your J for your Jetways, which are your high altitude. Now, kind of the downside to this, though, is, you know, if I look at this, yeah, it gives me the waypoint and everything like that, but it's a little different to get information on it. But the cool thing with this program is if you left click on any object, it brings up a display over here in the bottom left that gives you information about that object. So for example, if I click on this jetway, this is a Juliet 68, I can actually press the map key and it will highlight the entire jetway for you in one zap, which is amazing. It'll also give you things like the appropriate altitudes, it'll also give you the lengths, it'll also give you the waypoints for those of you who are doing a manual flight planning. Also in the top right corner, you have basically a little search bar that you can actually go ahead and select the different items. Now, if you're like me and you accidentally close this like for the 35th time, you can actually come up here and reopen it by go ahead and clicking on here. For example, if I click that button, it brings up this window. If I go ahead and actually, let's say, oh, I don't want to have my legend. Oh, let's put the win legend on. You can click that and it'll actually open that window back up again. So if you're like me and you accidentally close everything, you can just come back. Now notice that like it's always context sensitive. It'll remember the last airport you had. It'll give you your frequencies. It'll give you altitudes, your dreaded magnetic deviation. It'll also tell you where it's getting that particular scenery from. Other options from this aircraft, uh, this program, I should say, I say aircraft low, what can I say? Is it gives you the ability to actually connect with weather. I'm actually gonna shut off my uh, jetways here because this gets a little messy. Notice this is still visible even though I went ahead and made it uh, go away. So you can track these things just by the ones you want to track there, which like I said, that's super duper helpful. Other options you have, of course, is if you swing over onto this side of things, you have the ability to display the history of your aircraft on the actual uh, map. So if we've been uh, cruising around for a while, you can actually see where you cruised from. This option is really cool. It gives you the ability to get a compass rose around the aircraft that you're flying. And coming over to here, um, we have a couple other options. Uh, we can actually see things like a map grid, which for people who are a little old school, like myself, this is a wonderful tool if you want to get a little precise, like if you're doing satellite navigation simulation, for example. We also have the ability, of course, to uh, see country names, but unfortunately, you'll notice this option is not selected. The reason it's not selected is because depending on what terrain you import is going to dictate what option you have up here. So for example, if I do OSM, you're going to get an open street map here, and you're have a slightly different set of rules. Um, as far as uh, preferences for me goes, I love simple because it again it keeps it nice and simple. There's even this little atlas mode, which is uh, ultra, ultra, ultra simple, but it's again, it's more than enough information that you're going to need. Swinging over on this side, you also have the ability to put on MEA. Uh, again, this is a minimum en route altitudes here. And this will tell you regionally uh, what's the minimum altitude you should be traveling over a zone. Now, of course, when you look at over where, you know, chilling here in New England, these zones are pretty high. But obviously, well, if we want to swing all the way over here, You'll notice uh, the minimum on route altitudes get a little bit higher, but this is a great way to do some flight planning in a hurry. You also have the option to turn uh, weather icons on and off. Let me go ahead and flip myself all the way back over here. But before you can do anything with weather, you have to actually select the source of weather that you're getting for the flight simulator, I should say my little chart here. So if you actually go up to here where it says weather and click on airport weather source, you can dictate where the wind is coming from. Um, NOAA is very, very helpful. Assume you don't have any connection errors. Uh, Active Sky is pretty effective. But notice there's a selection 
even for a flight simulator. You can actually get the weather out of your flight simulator. So one of the reasons this is so cool is you can go into the flight simulator, set the weather, come back here and set that as the weather source. And now when you do your flight planning, it's going to automatically do all the hard work for you in the background as far as predicting your appropriate winds and altitudes and stuff like that. You can also, of course, pick VATSIM for those of you who fly for that. You don't need to be connected to VATSIM to get it. You can just click on it. And now we have VATSIM's weather. And you can even come all the way up to here. Oops, sorry. And you can even set it to IVAL for those of you who like to fly an IVAL as well. Personally, for me, I like to leave it on NOAA, but it's all going to depend on what you need directly. All right, go ahead and pop that out. So what does that do for us? What that does for us is it's going to give us these little tiny circles, which are going to uh, explain to us what the weather at a given location is. You know, if I want to see some information for this airport, I can actually click on it, and it'll actually tell me everything about it, and it'll even tell you the weather. Like uh, today, we have an incredibly powerful uh, cold front that's basically trying to get forced out by a warm front. So my winds here are 13 gusts. 20, which is uh, staggering, but we can also actually look at these little icons, kind of like you can with Sky Vector, to know exactly what the weather is. Like, you know, coming up this way, I notice that this icon is completely filled in green. So you're sitting there going, well, what does that mean? Well, if I actually come over here and I take a look at it real quick, we'll show information for it. I can see that, let's see here, a few clouds at 8,000, overcast. Whereas this one, where it's got a little bit of that pie, simply says that the sky is slightly open. Of course, if you go up to Westfield, you'll notice that there's a completely clear sky because the little pie here is filled in all the way. With that, I'm thinking about weather as well, is you have these little wind barbs that allow you to determine the wind speed. Now, these are surface wind speeds. These are not altitude wind speeds. If you want these, it gets a little more complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to weather, select wind source, and I'm going to go ahead and grab NOAA for my wind source. So what this is going to do is it's going to reach out online and go ahead and get me some wind. So what I can do now is I can actually pick my altitude and it will show me little wind socks at the wind's altitude. So for example, if I set it to ground, I can see clearly that we have some wind over here. Again, this is going to be each long line. Let me zoom in a little bit to help you out. Each long line is going to be counting as 10 knots. The little short lines are fi uh, five knots. So this is 25 knots at our selected altitude of ground. So 25 knot winds is pretty staggering. So of course, this little line here also tells us the direction of the wind, in which case it is uh, north, it's north, it's like west, northwest kind of a kind of a direction you can hold your mouse over it as well and it'll actually read off the wind for you at that time which is again this is like spoiling i wish i had this technology back when i used to fly but you can see all the different altitudes for the purposes of flight planning you can also tell it to be at flight plan altitude which is awesome so let's go ahead and see how bad the winds are at thirty thousand feet today Yee! look at this uh that is a 35 no actually it's not terrible for altitude and then of course uh every once in a while you're going to get one of these it's going to have the double barb on it which is always kind of fun it's kind of give you a heads up that you're dealing with gusts as well okay so the last thing we're going to take a look at today i'm going to go ahead and set this back to at flight cruise plan altitude is how to quickly make a flight plan inside of little nav map so first things first i'm actually going to go back to a statement terrain here I'm going to go ahead and I'll take a look. Oh, it looks pretty messy. So there's a million and one different ways you can create a flight plan. Now, if we want to, we can actually do one by basically by clicking on the items we want in our flight plan. I'm actually going to shut these off for a second here just to make it a little bit easier to see. All right. So the easiest way to do a flight plan is to simply right-click on the objects you want to add to your flight plan and go ahead and add them to your flight plan. So for example, let's say uh, we're up in here in Gardner, Massachusetts, and I want to start a flight plan. I'll right-click on it, come all the way down here, and I'll say Add Airport Gardner to Flight Plan, or I can set Airport Gardner Municipal as Departure. So as soon as I click that, it gets highlighted, and it's going to be added to this little box over here on the left, saying that it is now part of our total flight plan. Notice with our little flight plan here, we have an option to dial in what altitude we're going to be cruising at, what rules we're going to be following, as well as auto-generating some of these items as well. So let's go ahead and say we're going to take off from Gardner Municipal. Uh, we're going to fly over to, uh, let's say we're going to go down to here to Marlboro. I'm going to go ahead and right-click on it. I'm simply going to come down here and say Add. You can also control alt left click to add something as well. So I've got my start point. I've got Marlboro here. I'm going to go down. Let's go down to Hopdale Industrial. Why not? We'll make things interesting. We'll pop over to uh, Thompson. I'm just going to go ahead and say there. And I'll uh, go ahead and swing up to uh, Northampton. We're going to, oh, oh no. As you can see, um, it automatically attempts to link waypoints based on what is closest to your original destination. So in this case, unfortunately, I wanted this waypoint, but it automatically lined it up here. If this happens to you, simply come over on the waypoints here, find the offender, in this case, I'm just going to pick up Northampton here, and hold down the control key and use down arrow to put it back from where it belongs. And you can also, of course, right-click on it. And you can move legs up, down, or delete them. Now, one of the things I really get a kick out of here is that you can actually select the waypoint and press Enter and dial in information about it, which will show up inside the remarks page. Uh, be careful here. There are fireworks. 
So now if you actually take a look at your flight plan, it'll actually leave in your remark there. So that you can actually see it when you go to export your flight plan a little bit later on. So this will be my complete little flight plan here. It's going to be a little kind of swiggity swoop. It's a little ziggity zag, if you want to call that. And now here's all the different items in my white well, flight plan. You'll notice I've got my cruise altitude, my rules here, and everything is pretty good to go. Now let's say I want to delete something. Let's say, you know what, I don't really want to go to Hopdale Industrial. I actually just want to go down here to Putnam VR. I can now right click on it and I can press delete, or I can control alt left click it to go ahead and delete it as well. So now we're going to get a piece that looks a little bit like this. Now when you're happy with your flight plan, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. You can actually go up here to file and you can export it directly to your flight simulator of choice if you'd like to. You can also click on this really fun button which will actually take the flight plan, open up Sky Vector, and actually display the very flight plan which you just corrected. Now you're probably saying, it's broken, it's broken. It's not that it's broken, it's the fact that one of my waypoints does not exist as inside of Sky Vector's actual library here. And that is why that it did not show up when you did that. It's just an important little detail you want to kind of be mindful of. The other thing you can do too is you can save the map as an image, you can copy it into a clipboard, or, and I love this feature, you can actually print this. So what you can do here is you can basically create a little uh, report here that goes ahead and gives you all the critical details. If you don't want a detail, you can go ahead and uh, shut things on or off. For example, if I don't need a procedure here, I don't need a region here, um, I don't need a restriction, I don't need anything like that. Let's say I don't need, uh, let's see here, wind. Let's say we're going to keep that, which I'll leave remarks. Go ahead and press print preview. And it gives you this really, really nice little report that you can go ahead and use for the purposes of actually determining oh, exactly what you're trying to uh, get. Ah, here we are. So now we have our little report. It's going to give us all of our critical information about our performance. It's going to have our complete flight plan here and our complete flight plan, which is wonderful. It has all the individual waypoints. It's going to tell us how much time it's going to take to get there. It has already grabbed the wind from NOAA so that it can accurately go ahead and predict that as well. It's going to go ahead and dial here and you can even see my little remarks. It's also going to give you critical information for each one of your waypoints. Again, this is intended for flight simulator purposes. This is not intended for the purposes of, you know, doing real flying. There's actually very powerful tools for that, that pilots have access to that give you, especially, you know, like Garmin, for example. So that's basically all the critical beginning pieces for this. Uh, next time what we'll take a look at is kind of how to work with the simulator and this program, you know, some kind of general best practices as well as what does it look like when you're in the simulator and this is running at the same time. Enjoy.